Well, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and thank you, Jesus. It's around that time right here on KAZ Radio, where I have one of my most favorite shows, Perfecting Our Relationship with Our Lord and Savior Jesus. Take it away, Tony. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Thank God. This is such a wonderful, awesome day to be alive, and especially if you are in Christ Jesus. It seems like I've been away from you guys for so long, but I thank God that I'm back and we're back to uh, hear what God wants to share with us. And we're back to hear the heart of the Lord. So before we begin, let's open up in prayer. Father, I just thank you, Father God, for this opportunity to come before your people. Father, I thank you, Father God, for who you are. I thank you, Father God, that your word, that what you're going to teach us today, Lord, it shall fall on good ground, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that this word has been ordained, it has been ordered, it has been flavored, and it has been graced with your anointing. So therefore, Lord, we know that it's going to be, it's going to produce fruit after his own kind, which is Jesus Christ. We thank you in the mighty, precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Well, welcome everyone to another fabulous broadcast of perfecting our relationship with our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And today, the Lord wants to talk to us today about prayer. God wants to talk to us today about an effectual, fervent, harmonious, loving, intimate prayer life with him. Because as we know, as we continue in our previous broadcasts and in future broadcasts, we're talking about perfecting our relationship. And how can we perfect our relationship with our Lord if we don't talk to him? How can we perfect our relationship if we do not spend time in his presence? So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about prayer. We're going to talk about increasing and developing our relationship through prayer. And towards the end, I'm going to share I'm so elated, I'm so thankful, and I'm so grateful. I'm going to share with all of us um, the book that God has inspired me to write on prayer. Lord, I shall be a house of prayer. Because that should be each and every one of our goal, to be a house of prayer unto the Lord. So, God, I'm going to share some excerpts from the book, and I'm going to encourage you guys to go out uh, to purchase the book not for myself, but for Jesus, because this, this book promotes Jesus. This book, this book teaches us how we can come into that close, intimate relationship with our Lord and Savior through prayer. So let's begin. Prayer. Why should we pray? What is prayer? And I know if, me, if you are like myself, at one time, prayer was a chore, Many people, including myself at one time, looked at prayer as being tedious, as being mundane, being ritual, uh, um, ritual and routine. But that's not God. That is not God's intent for us. That for us to look at prayer in the, uh, in that manner. And until I came into the full knowledge or understanding of why it's important to pray and what prayer really means and what prayer really does, I had that uh, mindset. That, oh, God, it's time to pray because that was something that we're told to do is to pray. That was something that I felt that I had to do, but really not putting a lot of passion and fervent in it. Um, that, was the, that was the good thing to do. If you want to see God's blessing, you know, we need to pray. But the Lord opened up my eyes. Thank God for opening up the eyes of my understanding to give me a better understanding of, Tony, why are you praying? What does it really mean to pray? And the scripture that the Lord put in my spirit when we started writing the book was Jeremiah 23. I'm going to be going through some scriptures as we go through prayer. We're not going to go to all of them, but I do encourage you to jot them, th to jot them down so that you can go back and review them and get, and get an understanding of prayer for yourself. Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23, 23 says, Am I a God at hand, said the Lord, and not a God afar off? Am I a God at hand, said the Lord, and not a God afar off? And I think that is one of the biggest challenges that so many of us face because we cannot see God. We uh, view God as some deity and out of space far away because we're so used to relating to things with our five senses in the physical 
with our eyes, our our, our mouth, what we can feel, what we can hear. But God is a spirit. And the Bible tells us in John 4 that God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's in John chapter 4, the gospel of John. So it is, and by us always working in the natural and relating to things that we can see with our uh, natural eyes, sometimes it can be kind of challenging to pray to this being that I cannot see. But the, but the word of God tells us that God hear us. God, hear our prayers. If you are a born-again Christian and you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God hears your prayer. God is not far from you. He gave you his Holy Spirit that dwells within each and every one of us. So trust me, friend, search the scriptures. God hears your prayer. In the book of Isaiah, on numerous occasions, numerous scriptures, it, it, um, it attests to the fact that God hears. Here's our prayer number one, and not only does he hear our prayer, he also responds to our prayer. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 tells us that God, he not only hears our prayer, but he responds to our prayers quickly. What an awesome God we serve. So just knowing that, that I'm not praying to a being or a deity that's far out and out of space, that's untouched or cannot hear me, even though I may not see God because he is a spirit. God wants us to begin to learn to relate to him with our spirit. And that comes from constant communication with him. That comes from being in his presence on a continual basis, getting to know him getting to know him with our spirit. So that's how we have to begin and begin to see and understand God as a spirit. Because so many, including myself at one time, because I couldn't see him, because I could not feel him, because I could not touch him, because I could not hear him with my audible ears, prayer was not a priority. I did pray. I went to church, read my Bible occasionally, My prayer life was not fervent, it was not passionate, and it was not intimate because I did not know what that meant to be intimate with God. And I want each and every one of us to know that our God wants an intimate relationship with each and every one of us because God God knows everything about you and he knows everything about me. He knows the number of hairs on our head, but he invites us to come to get to know him. And that is one way that we can get to know him is through prayer. The Bible tells us that in um, Matthew 16, verse, uh, Matthew 16, verse, starting with 16, actually through 19, where Jesus talks about the kingdom, the keys to the kingdom. Prayer is one of those keys that God has given us to tap into his kingdom and to bring some of that um heaven goodness down here on earth. In Luke chapter 11, 1, Jesus' disciples, they asked him, Lord, teach us to pray like John taught his disciples. And I want you to take note. They said, teach us to pray, not how to pray. There is a difference. That to pray is just getting the desire, the eagerness, the want to to even begin to pray. And then as we read in uh, Luke 11, 1, you'll see where Jesus provided the template for his, disi- for his disciples. He gave them the model, the guideline, as to begin their prayer. And, he, uh, and in Luke 11, 1, he mentioned in the prayer, Lord, let thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So I go back to the fact that God, know each and every one of us, but he wants us to get to know him so that we can learn how to pray his will into our life so that we can learn how to bring his will down into the situation, into our situations, into our uh, environment, into the atmosphere. Lord, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's very, very important because a lot of things that we tolerate here on earth we don't need it. We it's not necessary if we knew the right words and the right way to pray. 
let your will be done. Yes, we Jesus, um, God saved us from eternal separation and from eternal damnation, but he also saved us so that we can have an intimate relationship with him, so that we can bring some of that heavenly goodness down here on earth, so we can bring some of that heavenly goodness into our personal lives. That's the purpose of prayer. We complicate prayer. It's very simple. Communicating, talking with our Heavenly Father. And not only do we talk to God through prayer, we listen to what God has to tell us. Prayer does not have to be long. It does not have to be elaborative. We don't have to use our fancy, repetitive words. Speak to God from your own heart with your own words. And as long as we are sincere, God hears us. As long as we are sincere, he hears us and he will answer us. You don't have to try to emulate someone else. You don't have to try to pray pray like sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so, the pastor, the apostle, the evangelist. It's your words. It's your communication. Talk to God about your day. Tell God how you're feeling. Tell God what's on your heart because he cares for you. He is concerned about what concerns you. Nothing is too small to talk to God about. Nothing is too big to talk to God about. Uh, school children, if, you, if you're looking at this broadcast and you're in school, you're in high school, you're in college, God is concerned about what concerns you as it relates to your education, as it relates to your classes, as it relates to your school, husband, wives. God is concerned about what you what you need to do to continue to perfect your household, how to rule, how to run your household. God is concerned. So I just want to encourage all of us, whatever it is that you, whatever it, whatever it is that you um, may be struggling with or maybe not struggling with, don't just wait for a struggle to talk to God. Talk to him all the time. Sit on your couch right when you're riding your car. Talk to God. Because that's what prayer basically is, is communicating in your language with your Heavenly Father. And that's what he wants. He wants each and every one of us to get to know him. He wants us to get to know him intimately. And the Greek word for know is yada, Y-A-D-O. And that's an interesting word, Y-A, I'm sorry, Y-A-D-A. That's a very interesting word, yada. It means know. And that know is the highest level of intimacy. It's basically what, uh, when we read in the book of Genesis chapter 4, when Adam knew Eve, that's intimacy. And that's what God wants from each and every one of us. He wants intimacy from us. He wants us to spend time in his presence, getting to know him. And the more that we spend time in his presence, praying, getting to know him. And I say this in every broadcast, we will begin to take on his attributes. We will begin to become more like Christ. And that is God's intention and desire for us. Because this may come as a shock to many. Prayer is not just about getting a prayer answer. The purpose of prayer and the way and God designed prayer was so that We can be molded so that we can be shaped into the image of Christ. The purpose of prayer, I'm going to say that again, is to mold us and to shape us into the image of Christ. And the reason that prayer does that is because as we we sit and we spend time, that intimacy with the Lord, we're abandoning ourselves, we are abandoned, we are abandoning our ways, we are abandoning our thoughts, we are abandoning our philosophies, our thought process, and we are taking on his attributes. We are taking on his character. We are developing his mind. So many of us always say, you know, we the, even the Bible tells us, have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. How are we going to get that? Exactly through prayer, and out, and also through reading the Word. But we're not talking about that because that is just as important, reading the Word of God. But today we're focusing on prayer. And in order for us to hear, hear the mind or take on the mind of Christ or to have that mind in us, 
We need to spend time in his presence. We need to be before him praying so that he can download his ideas, so he can download his thoughts into our mind. That's how we develop the mind of Christ. That's how we take on his attributes. And as I said earlier, before the Lord opened up my eyes to what prayer is all about, yes, I had a tendency to look at prayer as, oh, God, it's time to go pray again. I mean, I know I need to do this. Mundane, boring, kind of like I dreaded it. But once I under, once the Lord showed me the importance and why I'm praying and to how to add variety into my prayer life, I cannot wait to talk to my father. I cannot wait to hear what my father has to say to me. I cannot wait to see the things that my father will show me. And trust me, friend, when you begin to pray and you begin to get close and intimate with God, he will begin to show you things that you knew not of. And he says, and he states that in the the book of Jeremiah, and I want to say it's in Jeremiah chapter 33. However, when you purchase the book, we do allude to that. And, and we do allude to this uh, scripture in Jeremiah where God tells Jeremiah, I want to say it's 33, when you pray, I will reveal to you. When you pray, when you seek me, I will reveal to things that you knew not of. That is also stated in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, where God also talks about um, the spirit of the Lord. And how the spirit of the Lord searches, the, how the spirit of the Lord searches the heart of the Lord to know so that, to know those things of the Lord, because no one knows the heart of the Lord except the spirit of the Lord. So if you in God's presence and you're praying on a regular basis, and you're relating to God with your spirit, because remember, God is a spirit, and we must relate to Him in spirit and in truth, and we have the Holy Spirit to lead us in spirit and in truth, to relate to our Heavenly Father. God will begin to reveal things to you. He will begin to show you things that you knew not of. But you have to pray. You have to empty yourself. You have to abandon your ways and your thoughts and allow the Holy Spirit to fill you with the ways and the thoughts of the Father. As I started off, um, I'm, I'm grateful. I am so thankful. Lord, I shall be a house of prayer. I am grateful and I am thankful to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for inspiring me, for uh, guiding me and leading me in writing this book to teach us not only for me, but not only for me, but for all his people to understand what it means to pray, what it means to be a house of prayer, how that impact the way that we live here on this earth. Because if you're like me, I'm tired of being routine. I'm tired of being complacent. I'm tired of just going through life, um, not really making a difference. But until you come to understand and know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, that's when we will begin to be impactful. That's when we will begin to transform our communities, our neighborhoods, those areas of influence that God places us in. And he positioned us and he places us in those areas so that we can make an impact. But if we're not filled with the Holy Spirit, if we're not filled with his ways and his thoughts, we would never make an impact in the places and the positions that God has us placed in. And in order to do that, we must develop a a, a fervent, effectual, harmonious, intimate relationship with God. And he wants that from each and every one of you because that was one of the reasons that Jesus Christ died on that cross, not only to save you from eternal separation, but to reconcile you back to God so that you can get to know him on an intimate level. Don't don't take that for granted. Don't waste it. Choose you this day that you will make this is a, this this day that you will begin to go before the Lord and ask him to give you a hunger, to give you a thirst, to give you a desire to want to pray, to want to pray, to want to 
diligently seek him out in prayer because he is definitely a rewarder of those that do that. If you're tired of not seeing your pres- your, your your prayers being answered, but as I did say earlier, that the purpose of prayer is not just to get a prayer answered, even though as we draw close to the Lord, he will answer our prayer. The purpose is to mold us and to shape us and to form us into the image of his son Jesus. That is what prayer will do. And once we begin to pray and seek the Lord's face, because we want to be more like his son, because we want to make a difference in our in, in our um, areas of, of influence, in our communities, in our neighborhood, well, wherever God has positioned us, once we begin to pray unselfishly, because as we continue to stay before the Lord, we're going to find ourselves not only praying for our needs, because God already told us that he's going to meet our needs, but we're going to be going to God saying, Lord, what can I do to please you? Lord, what is it that you need me to pray about today? Lord, whom can I intercede for? Whom can I be that hedge around today? We're going to find ourselves praying more um, more about the things that God want us to pray about. We're going to, be, we're going to find ourselves praying more of God's heart. That's what prayer does. It connects you to the heart of the Lord. And you will find yourself praying more of his heart as opposed to your desires. And then you will begin to pray his desires because you have abandoned your ways. You have abandoned your thoughts. You have abandoned your wills. And you have allowed the Holy Spirit to fill you with the will and the desires and the thoughts of the Lord. And then you'll begin to find yourself praying what he wants for you. Then you will see your aunt, that your prayers getting answered because now I'm praying the will of the Lord because Jesus tell us whatsoever you pray in my name. And if it's according to the will of the father, he will grant it unto you. So you have now, now you're praying his will. Then you're going to see these things granted unto you because you're praying the will of the father. And that's one of the things that I know so many of us, but what is God's will? What is God's will? Pray. Pray. He'll show you. He'll let you know what his will is. Empty yourself and let him deposit his ways and his thoughts into your spirit. Then you'll begin to pray his will. Then you will see your desires being, and then you will see your prayers being answered, him giving you the desire of your heart. Once again, I do want to encourage, I want to encourage you, I, uh, the Holy Spirit, we go, we go into details. In Lord, I shall be a house of prayer. Why we should pray, why it's important to pray, how to get uh, God's revelation through prayer, the purpose of prayer, the uh, creative ways to pray, because God likes variety, just like you and I. He likes variety. So uh, the Lord shares, shares some ways uh, that we can be creative, how we can change our prayer life to be a little bit more uh, spicy um, and creative for the Lord. Well, I, the Lord also shared um, different things to pray about because there's so many, so many times we're like, well, what should I pray about? You know, we pray about the same thing over and over and over again. So the book also gives suggested topics, different methods, different ways that we can pray. So I do, I truly encourage you. You can um, pick up the book, Lord, I shall be a house of prayer. It's on Amazon. You can, it's on, it's at Barnes and Nobles, um, um, Barnes and Nobles, uh, Walmart, um, you could Google, Lord, I Shall Be a House of Prayer by Tony Allen, and it'll bring up the list of retailers where you can definitely purchase the book at. But I encourage, I encourage you, if you want to hide and take your prayer life to that next level and really get to know our Father, really get to experience the intimacy of our Lord and Savior, I encourage you to pick up your copy of Lord, I Shall Be a House of Prayer and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and open up your spirit as to what he wants from you and how you can connect with his heart so that you can be an impactful, powerful, fierce believer on earth in these last days because he, that's what he has called us to be. And believers, in these, last, in these end times, which we are truly in, we definitely need to be connected to Jesus. We definitely need to have a fierce, uh, um, 
effective prayer life if we want to make a difference, if we want to stay above above water. We definitely, definitely need to hear from God. And in order to hear from God, we got to be in his presence. we got to talk to him. You're not going to hear from God if you're not talking to him. And God wants to talk to you. He is saying, come, come, and let's talk. God is waiting for you to come to him today. But <clears throat> for those of you who do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, before you can become a house of prayer, you need to come into the house, into the kingdom of God. So I'm inviting you to today, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today would be the, this right now is the best time to open up your heart and to invite him in to be Lord, to be your Savior, and to be Lord. To save you from what? To save you from eternal separation from God. If you do not know him, you are separated from him. And the only prayer of a of a unbeliever or a sinner or one who have not came to him, who has not accepted Jesus Christ, that God is going to hear is the prayer of repentance. And I invite you to do that today. So if, if that is you, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please, and I am begging, please repeat these words after me. Father, I come to you in the name of your son, Jesus. I acknowledge that you sent him to die for my sins, past, present, and future. But not only did he die on that cross for my sin, you raised him on that third day. And because of his burial, death, resurrection, ascension, and his seating on the right hand, as I open up my heart, I ask him to come into my life and to save me from eternal separation and from eternal damnation. I ask him to be Lord and Savior of my life. Jesus, I repent of all my sins. And I thank you that because of your blood, I am cleansed and I can stand before the Father boldly and in confidence and ask for forgiveness. Father, I thank you for sending Jesus. Jesus, I thank you for dying and cleansing me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer and you were sincere, you are now a part of the family of God. But don't stop there. I encourage you to find yourself a word teaching church wherever you may be. I encourage you to get before the Lord and begin your prayer life. Get in your word and begin to develop an effective, an effective, effectual, fervent prayer. Because now God's ears are open unto your cry. Now God hears you. And he is ready to respond and to answer your prayer. For those of you who are already in the Lord, you already know, uh, know the Lord, I encourage you to make this day a day that you, that you take your uh, spiritual life, your spiritual walk, your spiritual journey a notch higher. I encourage you to take your prayer life a notch higher. Um, if you struggle with prayer, if prayers are a challenge for you, God knows that. Let him know that and ask him to teach you how to pray, to teach you to pray. Just as Jesus' disciples asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. Ask the Lord, Lord, teach me to pray. Show me how to touch your heart. And he will do just that. I love you guys. Y'all have a wonderful and a blessed week. Remember, Lord, I shall be a house of prayer. You can pick it up at Amazon, on um, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Walmart, and the majority of the um, retailers. I encourage you to pick up your copy today, and let God bless you and take you to a higher level in your prayer life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Have a blessed week. <music>